afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the TOA AM1 Array Microphone Overview. Today we're going to go over basically the features and benefits of the new TOA AM1 microphone. Just give you an understanding of how it operates, a quick look at the iOS app, uh, app for it, and kind of just go over just the general functionality of the microphone itself. So product overview. First, we're going to look at the technology, then we'll go into the components of the actual microphone when you do purchase one. We'll take a quick look at the iOS software, and then we'll head over to uh, look at the connections of basically how to set a unit up uh, in a, basically a scenario and what's required for connections to external devices. So a little bit of information behind the technology. Basically what the TOA engineers did is almost reverse engineer one of our line arrays. So you think of it uh, as a line array with the speakers kind of all together in a cluster. They essentially did the same thing with a microphone. So in this unit here, basically it does real-time steering for the microphones. It basically tracks audio sources continuously. And within that area, basically, you have your eight microphone elements. Now these eight microphone elements within the AM1 Constantly, uh, constantly detect sound sources. So essentially what they're doing is uh, monitoring and looking for sound sources across the eight microphone plane that's on the AM1. Like I mentioned before, it does have a line array effect with a narrow horizontal dispersion angle. And the great thing about this little unit is there's no analog connection kind of uh, setup and configuration. It's basically plug and play. And what you do is you set up your iOS software, which we'll get into a little bit later on here. And that allows you to do monitoring, live tracking, and a whole microphone setup. So it's a quick uh, quick kind of easy little app, of, uh, app that we have that essentially allows you to configure the units. And then once you do that, you're up and running. Now, I mentioned the technology. Essentially, what this unit will do is constantly track a person, a speaker, basically, across this plane. Um, what you'll find is anywhere you are within the radius of that microphone, it'll always analyze and look for someone talking. So in the infographic we have below here, if anyone is on the left side of this unit, it'll basically guide or steer those microphones to an open position, essentially, to pick up that person talking. Now, if that person ever moves, shifts, or walks, say, a foot in either direction, it's going to basically pick that person up and follow them as they're speaking towards a microphone. So in the scenario where you have possible gooseneck microphone or in a scenario where you have, might have multiple goosenecks to do the same thing, this unit does it out of all one unit. So now you're going to remove scenarios where you would have, say, multiple condensers, a um, platform or condenser uh, podium microphone set up. And in this scenario, you'd have this unit in that place. Now there's a few components that you need when you do uh, get the unit that basically allows it to operate uh, the microphone and give you an analog output to your uh, mixer device or whatever recording device you want to go with. So the first up would be the AM1C control unit. This little unit is the, basically the interface that connects a microphone and converts the information that it receives and gives you an output to go to your mixer. It runs on 24 volt DC. It has your microphone input, obviously, with the level gain control. It also has a selectable uh, XLR audio output, which is ranged from anywhere from plus 4, minus 10, to minus 50. So that's handy for when you want to go to mixing consoles, mixer amplifiers that require, say, a line level input or possibly a mic level input. We can do that basically right off the back of this unit. It also has a digital output as well via XLR if that is needed to go to a dig uh, digital mixing console. It also gives you LED indications on the front of the unit for power and mute control. Now, connecting to that device is the AM1M microphone. And this pulls power from the AM1C at 24 volt DC. The frequency response to the unit is 150 hertz to 18 kilohertz. And the voice capture range from this unit is up to three meters away. And the tracking is up to 180 degrees. So it's 180 degrees across the plane of the microphone, which they'll track. From the front of the microphone, if you're looking at it, say, dead on, it's got a narrow 50-degree directivity. 
basically that's assuring minimal acoustic feedback. So essentially, in a way, you're looking at multiple microphones, like I said, eight, four, eight of these units, almost in a boundary microphone setup, where everything is eliminated from the back of the unit and everything is concentrated going out at a 50 degree angle above and out forward towards the speaker. It does have built-in level compensation for reduced volume variations. And the key thing here as well is you can go up to 200 feet away from your controller unit. That's great for scenarios where you have a church podium set up or a possible conference room table where you need to run an outboard mix somewhere else. You can go up, like I said, 200 feet away from this microphone all the way out to your A1C. You'll notice as well on the right-hand side of the unit, there's a silver little button. That's your mute control. Essentially, you can have mute on, off on the unit as well, physically, as well as run that from the iOS software. Taking a look at the iOS app, essentially this is a full function iOS app that we have on the Apple iTunes store. It is free, so it's a free download, there's no charge for it. And essentially what this does is essentially lets you set up and control the microphone. You will need this app if you do want to set up and configure the microphone itself. It is definitely recommended to have this opposed to going through the software uh, via web browser. And the app obviously has allows you to, to visually see the tracking as well as do a lot more control than you would be uh, going through a web browser. The app also gives you real-time monitoring. And it gives you detection of the sound source location. The signal level of eight individual microphone elements is displayed. Your tracking range, the sensitivity, and actual speed of the tracking is also set up. So if you look at the right-hand side there, the little window there, all of that sliders that you see are all customizable, okay? You can basically have any distance limits, any angle limits, and any speed configuration set up to your liking. If you want to, say, have an aggressive speed set up for tracking speed, for instance, because the talker that is using the particular microphone for that day is moving around constantly, you can bring that up and increase the speed. If you want to reduce the length or the distance, how far away you want to do, uh, pick up within that three meters, you can also do that. You can actually narrow the field within a certain range. The three points that you actually see on the window there, the right, left, and the bottom center point, those are all adjustable. I can bring in my narrow beam width, essentially, if you want to call it, to any direction I like. So, for example, if you know a speaker is only going to be ever on the left-hand side of this microphone and never move around, I can cut off fully at a 90-degree angle on the right-hand side if I wanted to, and block that out, eliminate that. Even if someone else is actually speaking over there, the microphone will ignore that. It'll see the person on the right-hand side, for instance, but it'll actually ignore it because the window that you set up for this unit is only working in that range. We also have our gain compensation, your on-off, uh, remote on-off, essentially, for the iOS software, you want to do that as well. And like I said before, your distance adjustment uh, threshold. Okay, moving along, we also have your duration adjustments. Basically, how long you want it to trace in a particular area. You can actually time monitoring of a sound source footprint. It is in milliseconds, so essentially you can kind of bounce around of how long and how aggressive you want it to stay in a particular area. We can also disable the mute switch physically on the microphone. So if uh, this is in a remote area, you have an operator with the iOS app, uh, all of a sudden you have a speaker go up there and they, they're for some reason constantly pressing the on off or mute button on physically on the AM1 microphone. You can actually disable that from the app and, and basically eliminate any features or problems of people messing around with that. Uh, we have our output gain level adjustment as well. So if you want to boost your signal from the AM1C controller to your mixer, you can do that as well. Like I mentioned before, it is a free app, which is great. So it's basically, once you get the units, you download the app to your iPad, and you'll be up and running in minutes. Taking a look at some connections. Uh, essentially, here's what you need in order to get this microphone up and running. Obviously, you get the microphone unit with the AM1C controller. You will want to have your wireless uh, hub, switching hub there, connected uh, to the iPad. That way, you could have a Wi-Fi connection. Typically, your iPad would be on the same network range. That way, you can walk around with the iPad and know it's connected to the AM1C controller. From there, basically, you'll take your 
analog or digital output from the A1C, jack it into any mixer, and like I mentioned earlier, you do have that flexibility of going into either a line level input or a microphone input. Yeah, if you do want to control multiple uh, units, you'd have to have separate addresses set up, obviously, for each one, and then obviously the app uh, itself that would connect to them would only be able to run, obviously, and monitor one at a time. So basically, you connect the first one, set it up, configure the way you like to, and then disengage from that one, move over to the next address of the newer units, and then obviously set that one up and continue on. So essentially, this is basically uh, me wrapping this up. Uh, I know it's a short webinar, uh, but we're ho what we're hoping to do in the future is have a full uh, technical overview with the tech team here on this. It'll most likely be uh, WebEx based, so you guys actually see the iPad running with us controlling it and have like a live seminar set up. So look for that uh, information to come down uh, the tube there shortly.